Hi everyone, Cam here from Yes Auto and today I'm going to be driving this thing, the new Volkswagen Golf R. And I'm really excited about it because the GTI has usually been the definitive hot hatch to go for. In fact, it was the car that started the trend off in the first place. But cars are getting bigger now and more powerful and the new Mark 8 GTI has become more of a warm hatch than a hot hatch. And that's where the R takes over. And today I'm gonna to see whether this new Mark 8 version is any good. But before I get into the review, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. Now the old Golf R looked really subtle. In fact, a lot of the time you couldn't really tell the difference between a Golf R and an R line unless you looked at the back and could see the exhaust layout. Whereas this new model has a much more aggressive look and it mainly comes around here on the front bumper. So you've kind of got these fins that come up around here, which I think just look really cool. It gives the car some much needed aggression. And I love the way this kind of grille integrates nice and neatly with the black lip that runs along the bottom of the car. It makes it look like it's got an aerodynamic splitter. Much more aggressive front end. And you've also got this blue stripe that runs along the front, but you also get that on the GTE, which is the plug-in hybrid. Now, it's a little bit more typical golf around the side of the car. 18 inch wheels come as standard, but these are the optional 19 inch Estoril wheels, which are just over 800 pounds. I think they look really good. Absolutely love those. Little R badge along here. Again, nice and subtle, but things get more aggressive at the back as well. I just love it round here because it looks normal golf until you get to the bottom and you've got these four rocket launcher exhausts at the back. Uh, now these are the actual standard exhaust, but you can also spec an um, Akrapovich system, although it's very, very expensive. And this is also the standard rear wing, but there is an R performance pack where you get a more aggressive wing at the back for downforce. Of course, it's not all down to the visuals. We've got a serious performance upgrade on the Golf R. Take these brakes, for instance. They are much bigger than those on the GTI and also the regular Golf, highlighted by these massive blue R calipers. And behind them, you've got McPherson struts. And if we go to the back of the car, you'll find a multi-link rear suspension system, which is far more advanced than what you get on the regular Golf. Now the dampers are passive as standard, but you can upgrade to active dampers, which means the car is just a little bit better in the corners for around 800 pounds. And we've actually got it on this model right here. Now what's also cool about the Golf R is it's got a trick torque vectoring system. So torque vectoring basically means the car distributes power differently to each wheel to give you maximum grip in the corners. Now what this new Golf R can do is actually send 100% of the power to one of the rear wheels in the corner so you can get maximum performance. Of course we've gone over the more nuanced differences between this and a regular Golf but it all really comes down to this two litre engine. Now this is found in so many performance cars in the VW group. If you were to go out and buy an Audi S3 you would have this engine. The Cupra Formentor that we reviewed very recently, in fact you can click the link in the top right hand corner to watch our review on it, had this engine as well and so does the T-Roc R and the Tiguan R. But in the Golf R it puts out the most power of anything using this motor in the VW group. So it produces 316 brake horsepower, 10 more than pretty much anything else using this motor, and 420 newton meters of torque. Now, unlike the GTI, which is front wheel drive, the Golf R is all wheel drive, and it sends power to all four wheels through a seven speed DSG gearbox. Unfortunately, there's no manual option like there was on the old car. But if you've got a clear stretch of road, and you put your foot to the floor, you'll go from zero to 62 miles an hour in 4.7 seconds in a hatchback. 
So a lot of people think the Golf R is expensive, and at £39,270, it sort of is. But when you compare it with the equivalent DSG gearbox Golf GTI, it only works out as being about £4,000 more expensive. And most people are going to buy this on finance anyway, so when you compare the monthly costs, the Golf R is only a little bit more expensive. That is, of course, before you add on optional extras. So if you want the performance pack, which adds a bigger rear wing, raises the top speed from 155 to 168 miles an hour and adds drift mode, then you'll be paying £2,000. Leather seats, £2,600. And if you want the Akrapovich exhaust, that's over £3,000. In fact, there are some quite important things that are actually left off the spec list as standard. And if you wanted to tick everything on there, you'll be paying at least £53,000 for a Golf. So we've run over the cabin of the new Golf in our GTI review video. So if you click the link in the top right hand corner, you can get my full breakdown of the tech and also the layout of the new Mark 8. And the Golf R is pretty much the same as all other Golfs, but there are some small differences. So you've got this faux carbon fiber effect. In fact, it only looks carbon fiber from a distance and without my glasses on. When you go up close, it kind of looks like someone's taken a Brillo pad and scratched up the top of the dashboard. Um, we've also got these R seats, which are cloth, but they are really nice and they're kind of bucket style and hug you really well. And they've got an R badge at the top there. So it makes you feel special every time you get in and out of it. The steering wheel is roughly the same design as the regular GTI or even the standard Golf, but there are some subtle differences. We've got an R badge at the bottom, blue highlights uh, around the base of the wheel and also blue stitching. And the paddles are also a little bit bigger as well. So you feel like a proper racing driver when shifting through the gears. The only one problem I've got though, is that when you click the vehicle button in the menu, it shows a regular Golf and not a Golf R. Now, one other big difference on the R is that we have a dedicated R button on the steering wheel, which lets us change the driving modes from comfort, sport, race, and individual. And if we go for the performance pack, we also get drift mode and special, which is designed for the Nürburgring. So let's go and see what they're like on the road. Now, VW claims that this new R will go from 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds, and I want to know what that feels like. So I've not got the most advanced setup in here, but I've downloaded an app that's going to tell me how fast this will go from 0 to 100 Ks or 62 miles an hour. So let's give it a go. Foot on the brake pedal, other foot on the accelerator, and go. <laughs> that is a that is a fast car. I think I think there was a bit of hesitation on the start line there when I lifted off the brake pedal. The car didn't launch straight away, but let's see how fast that was. 4.4 seconds, which is faster than the claimed 0 to 60 time, but I think I can do a better job. So let's give that another go and go. Ah, oh, that felt better. <laughs> That's 60. Blimey, this thing is so freaking fast. So I don't really care if this isn't 4.7 seconds. It did, it didn't work. This app is completely useless. I measured it earlier at 4.41 seconds and I'm gonna take that. Now, VW says this new Golf R can also drift. And while we don't have the drift mode here, this standard car with the non-performance pack can still get its tail out. So let's see if they're right. I can 
can safely say that box is ticked. And I really wish we had drift mode in here. I really wish we had drift mode because I think it would be even more fun. But it's a really controlled drift. I don't, I don't really know how you'll be able to do this on a public road. Luckily, I've got a very beaten up and dusty runway to try this on, but uh, it definitely drifts. On the road in the new Golf R, what a car this is. You know, when I drove the GTI and the GTE, in fact, if you want to watch our video on the GTE, click the link in the top right-hand corner. I was a little underwhelmed. I thought they did a really good job of being warm, hot hatches, but they weren't anything really out of the ordinary. But this Golf R is a lot of fun. Dare I say, it's actually got quite a lot of character. I know we often say that Modern cars have too much power, particularly supercars and even hot hatches that are front wheel drive. I just think this Golf R with 316 brake horsepower and all wheel drive is a really great recipe. It just launches you out of every corner. <laughs> it really does have supercar like performance in a small hatchback that's relatively affordable. It's just nutty, so damn quick. It really is a step beyond a GTI. It, it, uh, a GTI really has become this warm hatch. This feels like a proper performance car in a straight line. But the Golf R always was a great car in a straight line, but what's this new one like in the corners? Because the old one could be a little bit underwhelming, a bit of a blunt instrument. It's a big improvement. It's, it's a really big improvement for a number of reasons. The first thing is this steering system is just so impressive. For a, you know, VW Group cars have a habit of being a little bit on the numb side, a little bit boring, but this thing, it does have a really nice, fast reacting steering rack very direct, but there's also a nice weight to it. I, I, this is one of the best steering systems I've felt on a VW product. It's really very good. The other thing as well is that we've got the dynamic chassis control system in this model, and it is an optional extra at about 800 pounds, and it brings with it the adaptive dampers. And it, it just makes the car feel really stable and razor sharp in the corners. The only thing I will say is, because it is so fast, it's actually quite difficult to make the most of the performance at lower speeds. So at the moment, I'm on quite a fiddly B road in a very, very country area. And if I was in a smaller hot hatch, I would definitely be having a bit more fun than I would be in the Golf R. The great thing is as well is that when I'm on a motorway, it becomes pretty regular golf. So I'm gonna take it out of race mode and put it into comfort. It becomes quiet and comfortable. It just feels like I'm in a regular golf or a normal GTI. And I think that's what really impresses me with the R is its versatility, it's, if you want it to be this angry, violent animal, then it can be. And I, I mean, it's about as fun as you can get on a, on a road without completely obliterating the speed limit. But if you want it to be that motorway cruiser, it can be as well. So I'm a big fan of the new Golf R. But what it does make me think though is kind of, what's the point of the GTI now? I'm, I've been trying to find ways to kind of say, oh, but the GTI has its strengths here and its strengths there. And it, in some ways it does, it is slightly cheaper. And as for a front wheel drive car, it is really quite impressive, but it's a bit of a lethargic drive. And I feel with this R being positioned so closely to the GTI, kind of wonder why you would get a GTI over this thing. If you know, let me know down in the comments. I'd really love to know your opinion if you would go for an R or a GTI and, and why that would be. 
But having driven both, and with the numbers being so similar, I think this is the new definitive hot hatch, not the GTI. The new Golf R really is that good.